Hello everyone, this is Ankit Jain. I welcome you all to my channel Tech Journey with Ankit. Today is day 40 of our LWC bootcamp. In today's session, we will understand how the aura as well as the LWC component can coexist with each other. For those folks to whom aura is completely new, aura is kind of a legacy lightning framework that Salesforce have introduced somewhere in 2014. And in 2019, Salesforce comes up with another lightning component framework that is lightning web component or the LWC that we call. Now in this session, we will understand in case your org have created any aura component and now they are creating a new lightning web component, how both the aura component and the new lightning web component can coexist each other. That means how they can share the data from parent to child as well as from child to parent. In addition to that, we will also explore how we can use out of the box uh, modals that Salesforce do provide with the help of which we can perform the alert, prompt as well as the confirm action in the LWC. Before we get started, a quick intro about me. My name is Ankit Jain. I do have more than 10 years of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem where I got an opportunity to work on the different clouds of the Salesforce, including the sales cloud, service cloud, CPQ, billing, as well as on the financial services cloud. I do have my technical expertise majorly on the LWC as well as on the integration. In case you folks like to connect with me, these are the different channels where you can go and connect. You can connect with me on the YouTube, LinkedIn, as well as on the Telegram. The links of all these channels are available in the video description. So let's try to understand the concept for today, how the Aura and the LWC can coexist with each other. Right? So as I said, Aura and LWC can work together. When I say Aura and LWC can work together, one very important point that I like to highlight here that your LWC component, it cannot contain the Aura component, but your Aura component, it can contain the LWC component. I am repeating one more time. Your LWC component cannot contain Aura component. That means your LWC code, it cannot have the Aura code. That means your modern code, it cannot have any legacy code, but your legacy code that you have developed in the Aura, it can contain the lightning web component. You can see the first line, what I am discussing here is, you can compose a lightning web component inside the Aura. So inside the Aura, you can definitely go and write down or call your lightning web component as a child, but it is not the other way around. Your lightning web component cannot have Aura as a child. So you can communicate down the hierarchy by using the parent set properties on the children. So what you can do if the aura is the parent and LWC is the child. So from the parent, you have to send the data to the child. You can again take the help of at the rate API decorator that we have already discussed in the past. Similarly, from the child, that means from the LWC, you have to send the data back to the aura. Then in such scenarios, you can take the help of the events. In such scenarios, you can take the help of the event. Another key thing about the LWC that we know that whenever we have to refer the LWC, we always refer the LWC in the kebab case. However, here it's an exception in the aura component. If you have to refer your lightning web component, you have to refer it with the help of camel case. Again, I'm repeating in your aura component, if you have to go and refer any lightning web component, then this is an exception. You have to go and refer it by using the camel case. Again, we will see everything down line, line by line with proper demo so that you will get the more understanding on this. But before you go and do that, let's try to understand how the syntax works. So in the first scenario that I am discussing, we are discussing here is your aura is the parent and child is the LWC. This will always be a scenario. Your child cannot be aura and parent cannot be LWC. Again, I'm repeating, whenever you are working on the aura and LWC together, you have to make sure that your parent is always the aura and child is the LWC. So what we are doing in this scenario is from the parent, we are communicating to child. In the LWC also, whenever we have to communicate from parent to child, we do have two options. First is we can do that with the help of at the rate API decorator. Second one, we can do that by calling a public method. Here also we will do, you know, do the same thing. So what we have to do here is we have to communicate from our parent to child LWC. You can see that this is my aura component. My aura component always starts with the aura component and ends with the aura component. Inside the aura component, we do have this colon structure. Right? So what we are doing in this example, we are creating one aura component and inside the aura component, you can see that we are invoking the lightning web component. This LWC hello world here, this is the lightning web component. 
and in this lightning web component we have to pass the data so what we are doing here is we are sending the data from parent to child so whenever we have to send the data from parent to child we will do that with the help of at the rate api decorator right so this is how we go and communicate with the help of property moving towards the next part in case you have to do the communication with the help of a method in case you have to do the communication with the help of method so for example on the lightning web component or on the child you do have the one method and you have to invoke that method with from the aura component so what you will do here from the aura component you will find that component here again lwc component 2 is the my component so what i am doing here is i am finding my component and calling that function here but again kind of one prerequisite here is whenever you have to call that function again your method it must be annotated with at the rate api decorator if your method is not annotated with at the rate api decorator again you cannot make a call from this method right so these are two prerequisites that we do have definitely first is we can communicate from parent to child by using the property and second is we can communicate from parent to child by using the method so whenever we have to communicate from parent component to child component in the case of lwc and in the case of aura where aura will always be the parent and lwc will always be the child we do have the option to do that with the help of api decorator again we will try to understand this with one example so for that again i am navigating back to my editor let me open my editor just give me a minute right so let me go and create the two component here first i am creating the aura component to create the aura component you have to take the option here as create aura component and let me give the aura component name here as the parent aura component right and the second one that i am creating here is the uh, control shift p and this time the second component that i am creating here is the lightning web component so let me go and give the lightning web component here is child lightning ghd lightning web component right so i have created two component one is the aura component and second is the lightning web component now in the aura component there are two there are multiple things that we have to do for example in the case of child component whenever we have to expose the component to the app builder what we do we go and write down the code in the xml file right in the case of aura we don't do we don't have any such file like that so whenever you have to expose your component you have to go and implement the interface in case you guys are familiar with the aura framework then it will be very easy for you what you have to do here is here you have to go and put the implements and whatever the framework that you have to invoke you can invoke that framework again if you are completely new to this let me quickly give you the overview about this what all different interfaces that are supported by the aura so let me put here the interface of aura component uh, no uh, let me navigate to the component library that will be more easy to do it again everything is available in the component library so what all interfaces if you have to go and check if you scroll down here you can see that we do have the list of interface so these are the different interfaces that are designed for the aura these are the different interfaces that are designed for the aura like in the case of lwc whenever we have to expose the component we expose the component to the app page similarly here you have to expose the component you can to the app page you can go and implement this interface similarly if you have to go and expose the inter component to the record page like this here we have to have the record template as well let's say i want to expose my component to app page home page and record page to all the different type then we do have another interface here that is available for all page type that is available for all page type so let me go and put this here right this is how you can expose your component to the <coughs> sorry app builder now as i said we do have the two component here and this is my lightning web component in the lightning web component i am defining one property what property that i am defining here is the let's say at the rate api and putting the property name here is the 
let's say name and as i am using at the rate api decorator here we know that we have to go and import the api decorator here right and what i have to do here is whatever the name that i am getting from the parent i am putting that name on the ui so i am navigating to the component putting the lightning card putting a title here as let's say lwc aura coexistence and putting an icon name as custom custom 14 so what again i am keeping it quite simple here i am just displaying the message that we are getting from the parent so here i am putting slds where i am around small and whatever the value that we are getting from there i am just displaying that value right so my child component job is done now from the aura component what i have to do i have to invoke this component how we do that whenever we have to as i said whenever you have to invoke the child component from the aura component what you will do you will put the namespace followed by the dot and here the, you will put the exact name whatever the name that you do have you will go and put the exact name of the component so here my component name here is the child lightning web component so i am putting here the exact same name right whatever the name of my component i am just putting here the exact same name now here i have to pass this property again this property will be exposed why it will be exposed because i have decorated this with at the rate api so whatever the value that we have to pass let me go and pass here the name as take journey with ankit so what i am doing i do have one aura component from the aura component i am invoking the lightning web component this child lightning web component and here i am passing the value and here what i am doing here whatever the value that i am getting i am displaying that value here let's go and deploy this and check this output so whenever folks you guys are working on any of the migration project right this time this concepts will be helpful to you uh, my lightning web component is deployed which one is failing okay let me go and try to deploy this again yeah my aura component is also deployed now here we go and add that component clicking on the edit page again keynote i have not exposed the child component here i have only exposed the parent component here so i'm adding that parent aura component here you can see that parent or a component so let me just go and drag and drop if i go back <clears throat> you can see that we are able to send the data from parent component to child component right we are able to send the data from parent component to child component now let's go and take another step as i said another way of performing the communication is by using the method so what we going to do here is we will put one button at the parent component and after that we will invoke the method from the child component what we will do we will take the method from the parent component and after that we will invoke the method from the child component so let's say on the child component i am defining one public method again how to define the public method we have already discussed in detail in the past session we have to put at the rate api followed by the method name let me go and put the method name here is show message whatever the message that we are getting we are displaying that message here and let's say here we are passing the message in the form of property and let's say i am putting the property name here as uh, okay let's say this method is accepting one parameter and the parameter that i am accepting here is the greeting so whatever the greeting that we will get we will go and display that greeting again to display the greeting what i am doing here is i am using here the for the time being i am just using the alert and here i am putting the sorry uh, this dot greeting dot to upper case so i am just converting the greeting and putting it into the upper case and alerting it but what we have to do as i said we have to call this method from the parent component so let's say on my parent component i do have one button so sldes where 
be around small. Now, in case again, you guys are completely new to the aura, the way we define the button is a bit different as compared to what we do in the case of LWC. So in the case of LWC, to define the button, we just put the hyphen button. However, in the case of Aura, so you have to make sure that you are selecting the button this time from the Aura and not from the Lightning Web component. So I am selecting the button from the Aura here, right? And you can see that syntactically, it is a bit different. So let's say I want to create the button of brand, uh, brand. so I am just copying this button here. Now what is the difference? Here you can see that we do have the button in the column form. Right, we do have this button in the colon form. However, again, whenever you have to invoke the method from the in the aura component, we use the curly brace. Again, there will be exclam there will be uh, double quotes followed by the curly brace, followed by the explanation, followed by the C. This this is called as the value provider, right? And this is called as the sorry uh, value provider only, correct? Uh, value provider and I cannot recall the exact term it's quite long I have used it either a value provider or an accept or an expression right and here we have to use the controller C stands for controller dot followed by the method name so this is the syntax that we have to use so again as I said if you are not comfortable with the aura syntax make sure that you are taking it from the documentation like we always do in our initial learning of the LWC right so i have taken this button now what i have to do i have to define this method at the child comp at the javascript file so your aura component whenever a button is clicked immediately the control will go to the javascript file again in the case of aura component we do have different javascript file if i show you the bundle structure you will see that we do have the different javascript files available here for example, here we do have the controller JS, we do have the helper JS, also we do have the renderer JS, right? Again, the, the structure of Aura is a bit complex and I don't want to take you to that route where we go and discuss everything about the Aura in detail. I just want to keep it crisp for now. So what will happen as soon as you go and click on the handle click or whenever you fire any event, from the component file, the control will immediately transfer to the controller file. It will not go to the helper file. It will not go to the renderer file. The control will immediately transfer to the controller file. So here you will get the control. Again, they have put the dummy method here. You can go and replace it with your method. Again, this method, it will always take three parameter. First is the component. Second is the event and third is the helper file. So what we have to do here is now as soon as, as I said, as soon as user clicked on this button from this JavaScript file, we have to make a call to this method. How we can do that? How we can do that? To do that, first thing that we have to do here is we have to go and find that component. As I said, what we, the first thing that we have to do here is we have to go and find that component. In the case of LWC, how we find the component? Anyone? Let me check the chart section. In the case of LWC, how we find the component? Can anyone let me know in the comment section? In the case of LWC, how we can go and find any component? Meanwhile, I will show you how we can do that in the aura and I'm expecting the answer in the comment section, how we do that in the LWC. So in the case of aura, whenever you have to find any component for that, you will use the aura ID, right? You can give any name to the aura ID. So here I am giving the name as, for example, uh, child LWC. As I said, you can give any unique name to the component here. So now what I have to do, I have to find this child component and invoke that method. So to do that, what we will do here is, here we will use the method component.find. So this component find is the method to find the aura ID. And here we have to go and pass this aura ID. Here, we have to go and pass this Aura ID. And from this Aura ID, whatever the method that you want to invoke, you can invoke that method, right? So let's say I have to invoke the show message method. So from here, I am just calling this show message method and passing the data. So let's say I want to pass the greeting message as welcome to learn LWC, right? This is the message that I want to pass. So again, I'm repeating what I have done. I have done multiple things here. First, at the LWC level, I have created one public method. Why public method? Because I have to invoke this method from the aura and to define it public, I have used here the at the rate API decorator. 
now the next thing what I have done in my component file I already have the component here from where I have to invoke the method right on the click of the button I am calling this handle click method so as soon as this method has been invoked the control will immediately comes to the controller file in the controller file this is the handle click method where we can go and define more than one methods as well right so what we have to do here is we have to find that component right and after that we are invoking the show message method and passing the data one thing that I want to make sure is is I am using the uh, no sorry here it should not be this so let me take out this because I am using the local variable right so it should not be this and the uppercase method is let me go and just check the method name if I am typing it correct because my intelligence somehow is not suggesting it correctly it's too uppercase because we cannot make any typo error so I hope it looks good here only thing is C must be capital right dot to upper case right let's go and invoke this so I'm deploying my child component first and after that I will go and deploy my parent component as well again the label that we have given here is the brand let me give some more logical label uh, let me give the label here as invoke child method what I am putting here is invoke the child method and let me go and deploy this now here I go and refresh the page Again, I'm expecting an answer from you folks and the answer that I am expecting is how we can find the component in the case of child comp in the case of LWC so what I am doing here is I am clicking on this button and invoking it so let me go and click on this you can see that the message is coming up and the method is getting invoked from the parent component because this button is available on the parent component this method which will show the alert message it is available on the child component so always remember folks whenever you have to invoke the method which is available on the child component what we at all different steps that we have to do we have to first find the component right by uh, that has been assigned with the aura id by using this find method and then call that method as simple as this right now moving towards the next part now let's go and turn the table now we will see how the child component can send the data to the parent component previously we have discussed how the parent component can send the data to the child component right where aura is the parent and aura is sending the data to the child now I am turning the table here here I says that my child component have to send some data to the parent component my child component have to send some data to the parent component how we can do that uh, there is one question from the Mukia the namespace is usually C does it change any time how can we check or find out again by default in case in your org there is no namespace then the default namespace will always C right in case in your org a namespace has been defined that you can find out from the package manager in the package manager you will see the list of namespace that your org is using in case in your org if you guys are using any namespace so let me show you quickly here then you have to use that namespace again in case there is no namespace available right again you can see a namespace setting in case the namespace are available or in your org you guys are using any namespace then you will see the namespace list name here okay in case no namespace is available then the default namespace will be C I hope you got your answer Mukia now as I said we are turning the table and what we have to do this time here is we have to send the data from child LWC component to the aura component how we can do that again the first component is my child component so what we have to do here is like we do in the case of LWC to child to LWC parent communication we have to fire an event 
again firing an event we discussed that it's a three step process in the step one you have to go and create the custom event in the step two you have to go and dispatch the event and in the step three in the parent component you have to go and handle the event again i am repeating it's kind of a three step process what we have to do in the step one we have to go and in the step one what we have to do we have to go and create the custom event after that we have to go and dispatch the custom event and in the third step we have to go and handle the custom event here handling we can do by again you prefixing with the on so here if the event name is given as the filter change we have to make sure that we are putting on as the prefix and followed by the filter change so my event name will be the on filter change event name you can give any name but just make sure that you are not using any special characters in the event name second thing is your event name it must be in the lower case you cannot use mixed case or the upper case here your event name it must be in the lower case right and once you have received the event or you have handled the event you can handle all the parameters that you are sending by using the event dot get param method by using the event dot get param method now let me quickly show you how we can do that so for this demo again i am creating two components and let me name the first component here as the uh, display message and this again this display message it's again an aura component and again i am creating a new lightning web component and i am giving the lightning web component as the generate message okay so again on my left hand side i do have the component as the display message and in my right hand side i do have the component which will generate the message so what i am doing here is i am keeping it again simple i am creating the same form that we have also created in the past which will take two different inputs so let me go and do that and what we will do here is after taking the inputs we will go and generate the full name and we will send that full name to the aura to perform the display part okay so here i go and put the lightning card putting a title as generate full name again remember that this is our lwc component okay and here i am taking two inputs so let me put here due class slds where p around small i am putting here one button let me expand this allergy lightning input and label for example enter name and here i am using here the on change event and here i am using the method as the change handler like and let me put here the enter first name and like this i am also taking another input to enter the last name after that i am creating one button so that on the click of the button what we will do we will generate the full name and send that full name to the parent component so let me put here the one button lightning button label generate full name on click i am naming it as the click handler and also let me go and put the brand is equal to button we have done this multiple times that's why i'm doing it bit fast but still if anyone do have any question you can let me know right so what i do have i do have the two methods available here one is the change handler and second is the click handler so let me go to the javascript file and create this two method one is the change handler and second i am creating here is the click handler right now in the change handler to identify the unique input what i am doing here is i am assigning the name parameter and i am putting the name as f name for the first name and to assign the input for the last name here i am putting the l name so that i can understand whether the user have entered the first name or the last name so how we will do it we will use the event here 
and in the event I am putting the value as uh, let me directly destructure it we have again learned this multiple times how to do it I am putting here the name value is equal to event dot target and here I am checking that if name is equal to f name then we go and define two properties here to store the first name and the last name let me put here the property name as the first name and the last name and here I am checking that if f name then we will go and populate the first name with the value else I am checking that if the name is equal to l name and I am populating here that this dot last name is equal to value right so this is how we go and populate both first name and the last name now the next thing that we have to understood here is on the click of the button what we have to do we have to perform the concatenation and generate the full name so let me put here let full name is equal to this dot first name or I am doing this with the help of string interpolation operator that we have again learned in the past right so for that we have to make sure that we are using the interpolation operator which is just below your escape character and here I am putting the this dot first name space this dot last name and I, again I am using the same method because I want to convert this into the upper case that is to upper case okay and now the next thing what as I said whatever the full name that I am generating I have to send that full name to my parent component so for that we have to follow the three step process what is the step one create custom event you can give any name to your event let me go and give the name event here as my custom event is equal to new custom event here you can give any name to the event let me give the name to the uh, event as message as I said you can give any name but make sure that you are not using the standard names like there are few standard names like the click change these are the few standard names you should avoid it your name must be in the lower case and you should not use any special characters here right so I have created the custom event now in this custom event I have to also send the data again to send the data what we do we use the detail parameter and in the detail parameter whatever the data that you have to pass you can pass that data here so let me go and pass the data here as the full name right what I am doing here is I am simply passing the data here as the full name and here again it's one and the same thing so you can also go and use it like this so this will be the property and this will be the value if you want you can give some another name as well so that's completely fine okay now the next thing that I want to do here is I have to go and dispatch the event so that will be the second step so let's go and dispatch the event so how we can dispatch the event to dispatch the event we have to use the this dot dispatch event and whatever the event that we have generated we can go here and dispatch that event from here so my step one is done right I have created the custom event my step two is done I have dispatched the custom event now in the step three what I have to do here is I have to go and handle the event so what is my component name my component name here is the generate message so again I am copying my component name here as I said whatever the name that you do have you have to put the name exact as is so I am putting the namespace colon generate message right now whatever the message that have generated we have to handle that message now what event we are firing we are firing the message event here so we have to use on message whatever the event name we have to just make sure that we are using here the prefix as on and as I said whenever we have to invoke any method from the aura there are few naming conventions that we have to follow first we have to use the exclamatory symbol followed by the C followed by the method name let me put here the method name as handle message right so C stands for the controller that you want to invoke the method from the controller and which method you want to invoke and this is if I'm not wrong this is referred as the expression so this is the method again as I said whenever any event has been fired from the child component what we will what will happen we can display that on the parent component here so what I will do here is 
uh, in the controller file where is that in the controller file yes so in the controller file we can handle that we can invoke that method so right this is the method right so the event will be received here and as soon as the event will received this method will be invoked now what we have to do in this method we have to go and read the parameter that we are sending for example here we are sending the parameter as the full name so here we have to read that parameter now how to read that parameter let me go and zoom this so we have whenever we have to read those parameter we have to use the method that is event dot get param again make sure that whenever you are using it here the p is in the capital case so you have to make sure you are using it with the same case so here i go and type it the method that i want to handle here is event dot get param and what is the parameter that you are expecting the parameter that i am expecting here is the full name whatever the parameter that you are passing so here i am passing the parameter as the full name that's why i put here as the full name now let me go and store this into one of the variable so let me put here the full name is equal to and what i am doing here is whatever the full name that has been generated again i am performing the alert operation here but this time previously we have done the alert on the lwc component now this time i am doing the alert on the aura component right so you can see the difference this time we have to send the data from the child component which is our lwc component to the parent component and how we have done that we have done that with the help of events so again i am deploying my child component here and the next thing that i have to do here is i have to expose my parent component which is nothing but the aura component to the app exchange so again i will go here uh, we have to implement the interface so let me go to the interface one more time available for all page type let me look that Right, so this is the interface that I have to implement. So here I go and implements is equal to available for all page type. Now let me go and deploy this as well. We are doing this step because we have to expose our component to the app builder. Now let's go and add that component. So again, I'm clicking on the edit. My component name here is the display message so let me go and remove this and i'm adding the display message component clicking on save let's go and validate the output so here i am putting the ankit jain if i go and click on generate full name you can see that my alert message is coming up from the aura component that is nothing but the ankit chain right this is how you can communicate from the lwc to aura so we have discussed both the ways how you can communicate from aura to lwc and also how we can communicate from lwc to aura again i am repeating one very important point please make a note of this because very frequently this question is also asked in the interview as well the point that i want to highlight here is from aura you can invoke lwc like you can see this example this is possible in in the inside the aura i do have the lwc component so what this is my lwc component right so this is possible however from lwc you cannot invoke aura from lwc you cannot invoke aura this is not possible right so for example if this is my lwc component in this lwc component i cannot go and invoke this aura component so for example i cannot if i go and start to put something like this display message right this is not possible this is not possible so always take a note of this whenever you are working on the aura and lwc so from the aura you can invoke the lwc and but from the ld inside the lwc you cannot go and put the aura code so you cannot go and put this aura code here this is not possible 
I hope I make sense to you folks before I move forward. Right now, next thing, it's very easy. I just want to give a highlight to you folks that whenever you have to perform any alert or you have to use the confirm box or prompt box that we by default also get from the JavaScript as well. Salesforce do recommend that rather than you go and use this kind of an alert symbol. You can see here rather than we go and use this kind of alert symbol or we should go and use the confirm dialog box and to put the message. Right. Hello. Or to use the prompt, we should not do this. Welcome. You should not do this. Let me show you how this three individually works. What is the difference between the alert, confirm, and the prompt? And after that, I will show you how it works in the aura. So to do that, let me take you to the inspect. Navigate to the console. So let's say here I am putting the alert message, for example. Alert is something basically that we want to highlight whenever we have to give the error message to the user, right? That's where we generally go and put the alert message. So you can see that welcome is coming up here. Now, similarly, we do have the confirm dialog box. Confirm means you want to take the confirmation from the user. So for example, let's say I'm putting here, are you sure? And let me go and take out this alert box. Okay, let's say I'm putting here, are you? sure and clicking on enter uh, okay i missed to end the code you can see that in the case of confirm box we do get this two option okay or cancel if you guys have observed in the case of prompt what we do get in the case of prompt we do get only one option as the okay and if you click on the okay what output you are getting you are getting the output as undefined right in the case of confirm you will get two options, OK or cancel. If you click on OK, you will get the value as true. Similarly, if you go and click on the cancel, you will get the output as false, right? So that is the difference between the alert as well as the confirm. The third thing that we do have here is the prompt. Prompt is generally useful whenever you have to take the inputs from the user. For example, if I have to ask the user, what is your age? Right. So in case we have to go and take this kind of inputs from the user, then go you go and use the prompt. Again, I'm not going to go and take the examples for this. As I said, it's very easy to go and use it. Right. You just have to make sure that there are three different components that Salesforce have provided. One is the lightning alert. Second is the lightning confirm. And third is the lightning prompt. So how to use it? If you have to use the lightning alert, you have to just import the lightning alert from here and you have to invoke the lightning alert that open. Salesforce have put very good documentation in the component library for this. Again, this alert and the uh, prompt and the confirmation, everything is available in lightning as well as in the aura. You can see that on the click of the button, right you want to give an alert message to the user or for example let's say user is entering some value which is going exceed the limit for example let's say user is entering the account name more than 50 characters right you want to give the error message to the user you can immediately block the user by using this right it's very easy you just have to go and put it or let me quickly show you how to do that by creating one simple component it will not take much time so so that you will also get the idea how these things works okay so i'm putting and creating an example here dialog box demo and here let me go and put the three different buttons or let me put one button at a time lightning button sorry let me go and lightning card title what we can call this uh, Okay, let me put here the alert component and here I am putting one button Dev class SLDS where P around small lightning button label alert me and on the click of this I want to call the 
click handler okay or let me put here the alert handler like this i just want to repeat this block for the different button let's say here i am putting the confirm me and here i am putting the method as confirm handler and third i am putting here as the prompt me and here i am putting the prompt handler right so i have created three different methods here so let me go here again for the demo we will go one after the other i'm not putting the code for three so let's say first is my alert handler second is the confirm handler and the third one that i have created here is the prompt handler as i said whenever you have to perform the alert you have to first go and sorry you have to first go and import the lightning alert like this and after that whenever you have to invoke any functionality again this alert or the prompt or the confirmation they all are asynchronous method so you have to make sure that the method that you are defining here is the asynchronous method right so what you have to make sure is the method that you are putting is the asynchronous method and in this asynchronous method you can go and put the alert box here now here you can go and put the message what message that you are looking for for example let's say here the default message is the alert message now here you do have the different options for the theme in case you wants to put the error or red theme right like i have put it in the screenshot this is nothing but the error theme in case you wants to put the success theme then you can go for the success theme as well it's completely up to you what theme you want to use you can go for the theme again variant there are two variants available one is the header and second is the headerless header means basically you in case you are putting the header then you will get this red color header if you are not putting the if you are putting the headerless then you will only get this white color body it's completely up to you how you want to display it the default value is the header uh that's all i believe so uh let me go and deploy this and i will show you okay before i go and deploy this let me expose this component it's very easy to use and many developers do use this kind of a concept whenever they have to give a kind of a warning message to the end users right rather than you go and use the alert modal because uh, uh, the web organizations are planning to depreciate this alert confirm and the prompt methods that are using in the third party apps like a salesforce is third party app for the web right and that's why salesforce comes up with this approach so make sure that in your project also you are not using the alert confirm and all other this dialog box but you are using the uh modals that salesforce have provided so what is the component name dialog box so if i go and click on this alert me you can see that we are getting this our own dialog box right if you go and click on the okay as i said in the case of alert if you go and click on the okay the output will always be the undefined okay now same goes for the confirmation as well so for the confirmation here you can go and search for the confirm box again here what you have to do here is you have to go and import the lightning confirm so let me go and perform this import and the next thing that you have to do here is here you have to again make the asynchronous method and so here i am putting the asynchronous method and let me go and put the code because as we are using the await so whenever you have to use the await the method needs to be asynchronous so here it is lightning confirm dot open right here you can see that this time here they are using the variant as headerless just to give you the flavor how the headerless looks like again if you don't want to use the headerless here also you do have the value as the default header for example this last in the last time we have put the or let me go and put it to header because headerless it doesn't look good in case you wants to see the how the headerless looks like uh, okay this is not the correct photo right so and what i want to add here is the theme 
and this time I am putting the theme as the success and let me change the label here as are you sure okay and this is the confirm message right so whatever the result that you are getting as i said if the user clicked on the okay button you will get the value as true if the user clicked on the for cancel button you will get the value as false if you want you can also go and log this console.log result so here i go and put the result let me go and deploy this so we'll see how the confirm box will also work so here I go and refresh the page. So if I go and click on this button, you can see that this time we are getting this green background. Why green? Because here I have put the theme as success, right? It is nothing to do with the alert or the confirmation it's completely up to you what kind of theme that you are putting accordingly that color will change and as i said here you will get the two things one is the okay as well as second is the cancel so based on the value that you are putting right uh you will get the value of the result so for example if i am putting okay here you can see that the result is coming as true similarly here if i go and put the cancel you will get the value as okay moving towards the last method that is nothing but the prompt handler so for the prompt here we go and look for the prompt Op opening the prompt here and again for the prompt again we have to go and perform the import operation so again I am copying the import and putting it here and as I said, prompt are helpful whenever you have to take the inputs from the user. So again, one key thing here is you can see that prompt is not asynchronous, right? So that's why here they are not using any async await functionality. So again, I'm just copying this code from here and putting it here in the prompt handler. Now, this is the prompt message. Let me go and change this. Uh, enter your favorite uh, channel okay and again theme here also you do have the option of the theme if you want to put so let me go and put the theme here this time i want to put the theme as the yellow it's completely up to you whatever the theme that you want to put let me go and put here the theme as yellow so that I will get the uh, warning background. I'm just putting one of this value, right? A label, I'm putting here the please respond and default value. Let me put here the, here you do have the option to put the default value, which is completely optional. Here I'm just putting my channel name. Again, it's completely up to you folks. <laughs> what channel like you ought to put here. Uh, again, as I said, whatever the result that you are getting, right? And whatever the value that user is entering, you can go and print that value so let me just go and log that value here console.log result so let me go and deploy this here i go and refresh the page and this time i am clicking on the third button that is the prompt me you can see that we are getting this please respond right we are getting the enter your favorite channel here the default value is coming up if you want you can change this value and let me put here the updated value as by Anki Jain and if I go to the inspect navigate to the console clearing it and clicking on ok you can see that we are getting the 
output whatever the value that user have put in the prompt box we are getting that in the form of output right so this is how the prompt works in the lwc so we have seen how to use the confirm dialog box how to use the alert box right we have seen how to use the confirm box confirm box again i am repeating it does have two things if you click on okay the return will be true if you click on cancel the return will be the false right and third one is the prompt whenever you have to take any inputs from the user and accordingly you want to act so rather than you go and use this uh, the default alert confirm or the dialog box that you are getting from the native javascript rather than you go and use the alert something like this welcome it's better that you guys should go and use the alert that we have just now discussed that's all i do have folks for today's session i hope you guys found today's session helpful and got some new learning from the session right in case you folks like the session make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe the channel as well thank you folks have a good time bye bye